Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug acetyl salicylic acid, or ASA, also known by the brand name aspirin. Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out why aspirin is so often ordered as 81 milligrams instead of a simple 80 milligrams. ASA belongs to the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug classification, or NSAIDs for short. As the drug class suggests, ASA reduces inflammation, allowing it to be used to treat pain, among other things. So let's see how ASA works. In our body, we have enzymes called cyclooxygenase, or COX for short, that are responsible for producing prostaglandins. Prostaglandins have many effects throughout the body. Prostaglandins help cause inflammation and fever, which aid in the healing process in our body. However, as we know, inflammation and fever can be painful and uncomfortable. Some prostaglandins can also cause our blood to clot more easily by stimulating platelet aggregation. This is when platelets form a kind of mesh that traps red blood cells and promotes blood clotting. So again, without going into too much detail, prostaglandins help to cause all of these things. ASA is an example of a COX inhibitor, which in turn inhibits the production of these prostaglandins. And fewer prostaglandins leads to less inflammation, less fever, less pain, and less blood clotting. ASA is used for a wide variety of reasons. In its immediate release form, ASA can be used for various aches and pains like headaches and dysmenorrhea. It can also be used for various inflammatory-induced aches and pains, like rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, for pain after dental procedures, and many more. Due to its ability to inhibit platelet aggregation and reduce blood clotting, ASA can also be used as maintenance medication for the prevention of various thrombotic incidents, including cardiovascular and cerebrovascular blood clots. For those who are at risk, extended release ASA can be given to reduce the risk of death caused by myocardial infarctions, also known as heart attacks, and ischemic strokes. If a heart attack is currently suspected, it is often recommended to chew 2 to 4 81 mg immediate release tablets as soon as possible to reduce platelet aggregation and in a sense, slow down the suspected heart attack. Remember, a heart attack occurs when the heart is not getting enough blood and oxygen, which is often caused by blood clots that form in the arteries of the heart. So again, ASA may help slow down the heart attack and reduce the symptoms of the heart attack in the short term, but remember that this is only a temporary fix and will not fix the underlying problem. Medical attention is still required immediately. There are many possible side effects of ASA, so we'll just go over some of them here. We already went over some of the effects of prostaglandins, like inflammation, fever, and pain, but there's another really important one. Prostaglandins also help to protect the stomach and intestinal lining. So ASA, because it inhibits prostaglandin production, can actually cause the opposite to occur, essentially causing damage to the stomach and intestinal lining. This damage can potentially lead to bleeding and ulceration of the stomach and intestine, which may present as stomach pains. ASA, especially with long-term use, can have negative effects on the renal system, or the kidneys. NSAIDs are commonly associated with nephrotoxicity, which may present as decreased urine output, fluid retention or edema, increases in creatinine and BUN blood levels, and more. Also with high doses or long-term use of ASA, tinnitus or ringing in the ears may occur. This should go away once the medication is discontinued. And of course, ASA can also cause increased bleeding time and much more. Due to the side effects, ASA is contraindicated in patients with active GI bleeding or ulceration. Taking ASA during pregnancy generally isn't recommended unless told otherwise by your healthcare provider. Low-dose ASA is sometimes used for pregnant women with recurrent pregnancy loss, clotting disorders, and preeclampsia. It is very important to teach clients that ASA should not be taken for a suspected stroke. This is because not all strokes are caused by blood clots. Some strokes are hemorrhagic, which means that they are caused by a ruptured blood vessel which bleeds into the surrounding brain. Because ASA reduces platelet aggregation, making it harder for the blood to clot, ASA will make hemorrhagic strokes even worse. Exercise caution in patients taking nephrotoxic drugs, geriatric patients, patients with low platelet count, also known as thrombocytopenia, other blood clotting disorders like vitamin K deficiency, and more. Always monitor and assess for side effects of ASA. Be aware that geriatric patients may require lower doses. Long-term therapy may require regular blood work to monitor kidney function, liver function, and bleeding time. You may also want to monitor intake and output and daily weights to help monitor for fluid retention. 
To avoid GI distress when taking ASA, you can take it with food. And finally, one interesting piece of information I found about ASA's common dose of 81 milligrams is that it actually comes from how some drugs used to be ordered historically in a system called the apothecary system. ASA used to be ordered in grains as opposed to milligrams. One grain was approximately 65 milligrams, and a standard dose of ASA was 5 grain, or 325 milligrams, which is still used today. So where does the 81 milligrams come from? Well, a low-dose ASA was often ordered as one quarter of the standard dose, which comes out to 1.25 grains. And 1.25 grains converted to milligrams is about 81 milligrams. And that 81 milligrams still exists today. And that's about it for the basics of ASA. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, Please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.